name's Tom Boyd. I'm a former AFL player with the GWS Giants and the Western Bulldogs Football Clubs. Um, and I studied a Bachelor of Business at Victoria University. Year 12 was such a wonderful year, both from a learning point of view, but also a really transitional period in our lives. And um, I remember vividly the challenge of trying to juggle sport, social life and school. Um, and it was something that I found um, enormously rewarding as I you know, learned to deal with different pressures in my life. As I was under scrutiny, obviously in the classroom, trying to get the best ATAR I could. Um, I was uncertain about my future as a footballer and also just trying to enjoy life. And I think year 12 is such a wonderful experience for so many people in the sense that if you can really hone in on your time management, um, your ability to interact with people and lean on people for advice, then ultimately you're going to have such an enjoyable experience through your year 12. And also, it's a great time to learn skills that will take you into the future in a really positive way. I actually remember getting my results. I was on a, a football pre-season camp in Noosa, um, seven o'clock in the morning, my phone went off, Josh Kelly's phone went off, who was a teammate of mine at the time, and we you know, eagerly checked and compared our scores against each other. So yeah, it was a really enjoyable period of time. And um, it's one of those ones where you're really trying to soak it all in as quickly as you can, because you know things are disappearing as you go through the final years of school and, and become a, an adult so quickly. I'd sort of dropped a subject in my final year of school to balance out my football expectations and um, you never really know and that's one of the like great parts of um, anticipating something that, that can be quite nerve-wracking um, when you do realise the gains of all the hard work you put in it's a really satisfying moment and I was really proud of getting my, um, my score at that time. I was first basically part of this huge um, draft pool, which is essentially you know thousands of kids who nominate for the draft every single year. Um, and it was pretty clear to me as the year went on that I was gonna go somewhere in the high part of the draft. Um, and within that is a small cohort of players around 15 to 20 kids who get invited to the actual draft night, which in 2013, my draft year was um, in, on the Gold Coast. And luckily enough, amongst all my peers, um, I was selected as the first overall pick in the 2013 National Draft, um, which is obviously something I'm really proud of and um, sort of validated all of this hard work I not only put into my schooling, but balancing out my time and trying to achieve excellence in sort of both parts of my life. And um, it was a really great moment for myself, my family and my friends to celebrate um, my achievements of my childhood, essentially. So we went through a bit of a pathway program through a diploma um, with the Western Bulldogs, but from a broad sense, and this is another piece of advice for people who are obviously looking to study, if you're not sure, it's always good to go broad and then you know, narrow your focus and pick your majors and then go into you know, potentially more education once you finish your bachelor. By the time I finished my AFL career, I was completing full-time university. I was doing block mode, um, night school, and funnily enough, the actual moment to retire came in the car park that I parked in um, here today where I sat in this um, in my car and I was looking into the university and I felt better about going in to do that than I had been going into the football club in a long time and I thought sort of had reached this crossroads in my life where I knew that the world outside the AFL had a lot more to offer me than perhaps just being an AFL footballer that I had more to give and, and more growth in me um, and so to really dive into my studies this year which I was sort of lucky enough to um, even though I lost work, I actually gained the time to, to finish my degree. And it's been you know, a remarkably enjoyable experience to go through and learn, validate some of the things that I already knew, um, meet new people, um, learn about different parts of the course, and also um, that satisfaction of just achieving the final class and the final part of the unit and, and getting my marks back and being ready to graduate in December is, is something I'm really proud of. Um, for me, I'll definitely look to do an MBA in the future after I get some work experience in the real world. Um, but business always fitted well with me. It fitted because um, I've always dealt with business people through football. I've always felt comfortable around them. And I essentially just wanted a baseline that I could sort of measure myself off, learn some skills that I didn't have and also quantify some of the skills that I had already obtained through my you know, personality and the things that I'd learned in my football career. Well, Victoria University has a long-standing relationship with the Western Bulldogs Football Club, obviously. Um, that was really appealing. Um, the options to have a flexible timeline in terms of getting into the course through the diploma, as well as the flexibility and being able to do the block mode was essentially the, the key driving factor in myself and a number of the other boys engaging with Victoria University. Um, try as they may, 
the AFL industry doesn't have a lot of time left over for players to engage in tertiary study. And being able to complete intensive study over four week periods that we sort of isolated as periods that were slightly down times for the AFL was perfect for us. And whilst difficult to balance the two together, it really allowed me to both study and play football at the same time, which was something that I was really, really um, appreciative of. I chose to study the Bachelor of Business at VU as I went through a bit of a diploma program um, whilst I was playing footy. And then it sort of really coupled well with the skills that I already had and the skills that I sort of wanted to obtain. The flexibility in study these days is one of the most useful things that universities offer, um, both with the scheduling from a time frame point of view, the scheduling from a course style point of view, and also the ability to get into the courses from a variety of different pathways. So take advantage of that and essentially just try and get to where you want to get to, whichever way you can. Block mode is essentially uh, nine hours a week, intensive study. Um, it's much more practical and interactive with your classmates. Um, it's less based on simple rote learning, but rather practical learning in terms of implementation of the content into presentation skills, into um, intensive testing. And what I found was that it forces you to actually hone in on one subject and actually learn. So often I found with the old mode or mode of um, university was that by the end of the 12 weeks, I'd forgotten a lot of the things I'd learned in the first three and there would be this huge revision stage before an exam. But with the block mode, you were essentially just studying one thing intensively for four weeks. And I found that from a retention point of view, far more effective for me. I work with an Indigenous foundation called Kalara at the moment, I'm basically doing some project management work with them, um, which is a really exciting opportunity that I've got at the moment. Um, but I also do some workshops. I run um, essentially workshops based around resilience and the things that I've learned through the AFL. I do a lot of presenting work um, with various corporate groups and schools and universities, et cetera, et cetera. And also, I'm just looking to essentially continue to learn. And I think that's one of the greatest skills that I've picked up along the way is an appetite to try and you know, include my personal development right at the top of my priority list. Um, whether I'm going well or going poorly, trying to learn more and be better and be more understanding is always something that I've really, really prioritised and I'll continue to do so as I move into the workforce. My advice to all young kids going into year 12 and even into your tertiary education is don't just hope to get over it. It's just try and enjoy it. Try and soak in the people, the experiences, and just the vast array of things that each situation that you're placed in has to offer. My advice to anyone who's looking to study is don't stress too much if it's not exactly what you hoped it would be. Um, the first impression you'll get at university is that it's really different to school, um, and that's an important step in the right direction. Essentially, you're going from being, um, let's say, coddled in a good way at school to being left on your own to work things out. And, and that's where you lean on your friends and your cohort um, and your tutors and the lecturers and trying to engage with the university to get better. Um, but in having said that, if you're trying to pick a, pick a course or pick a subject, you can change. Um, there is quite a, fa a fair bit of flexibility once you do get to the university sphere. And, and also within the broader world, your university degree is only a part of who you are. Um, in developing your interpersonal skills, developing your presentation skills are all a part of the things that you pick up whilst at university. So it's not the be all and end all of your entire life, what you choose. So dive into something that you think you enjoy, something that you think will be useful and something you think that you're good at. AFL as a profession, um, professional sport is very consuming. I found that I got overly um, obsessed and overwhelmed with the game of AFL football and it played a really large part in my enjoyment of the game. Um, and what's, what I found was that once I actually began to engage in study and began to become part of the Victorian University culture is that I had a, another group of friends and another support network around me and I also had another source of achievement in my life which allowed me to really achieve some balance and allowed me to feel like I was still enhancing Tom the person even if Tom the footballer wasn't going exactly as planned. For young people in particular um, who've experienced so many different things and they're through going through transitional periods of their life, I think investing in educating yourself in mental health is the number one priority. Um, not only for yourself but your ability to react to other people's challenges, to notice the symptoms in your friends and family, to notice um, changes in the way they're behaving um, and the ability for then you to be able to be a support to them. And likewise, your ability to understand how mental health affects not only your ability to perform 
as a person, but in the classroom, um, on the sporting field, or wherever it is in your life, mental health is right at, at the cornerstone of how we deal with people and how we live our lives. And it's the number one priority, I think, for young people and people more broadly.